Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to do Basin Street Blues. <laughs> Basin Street Blues was written in 1928 by Spencer Williams and was recorded the same year by Louis Armstrong and it quickly became a jazz standard. Basin Street itself is the main street of Storyville which used to be the red light district of New Orleans. This is a useful number for a fiddle player to know uh, especially if he or she doesn't uh, exclusively play in hot club bands. Uh, because um, all jazz players, uh, kind of mainstream jazz players, will know this. And um, if and when you play with these kind of people, then this is what they, they uh, will want to play. It's, I suppose it, it's, it's far more at the early jazz end than um, modern mainstream jazz, but uh, certainly everyone's going to know this. Uh, so I'm going to show you the basic melody, a few things you can do with that, and three different approaches to soloing on it. Uh, the key B flat is not the friendliest of fiddle keys, but um, if you're going to play uh, with the kind of musicians that are going to know this, then you're going to need uh, some B flat tunes. So let's go slowly through the at the verse and incidentally uh, it's not a blues in that it doesn't have tw it's not a 12 bar sequence and um, it doesn't have the standard uh, 32 bar format it's kind of an intro followed by a 16 bar melody so um, the intro goes like this one two three <laughs> say about the first line we've got a, a repeated phrase um, the if, if it's being sung then the voice will do da, 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 then the band will do and then the voice does da, ba, da, ba, da, da, band does so it rather, rather depends on the instrumentation that you're playing with as to whether you repeat these lines uh, it's probably better a, a pianist, I, I think, would naturally do a, uh, an answer for you. Uh, a four-piece band would probably provide an answer. If you're just playing um, with a guitarist, then it might be a good idea to maybe do the... Make your answer different from your question, shall we say. Um, or you might do a... Something like that, just to make it more interesting. And the details of the melody are up to you. Don't feel that you have to play what I've written or any other sheet music that you see for Basin Street Blues. You don't have to play exactly what that is. You have to follow the skeleton of it but the detail of any jazz melody is up to you to fill in. So the rhythm, the phrasing, um, the individual notes are all pretty well up, to, up, up for you to, to sort out. So don't feel in any way inhibited by, uh, by what's written down. Okay, then we're on to the... Um, actually, let's just do that again. Let's do that with the backing. One, One two, two, three, four. <laughs> Then we're in 
into what you might call the chorus. Um, so I'll do it slowly. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And uh, if you listen to Louis Armstrong singing this, then he certainly doesn't follow any predetermined melody. He kind of messes around with it, and that's really what you've got to do. Let's do the same thing again, and this time with the backing. Now in this part, um, I think the, the first six bars are pretty boring. Um, so try and find something a little bit more interesting. I think putting in an F sharp uh, in the second bar is going to help to kind of move the thing along a bit. Now the next bit, the melody is interesting and important. And that will work nicely with parallel fifths. So parallel fifths is done simply by putting each finger not only on the, the written melody notes, but also the string above. So that a, a C becomes a C with a G. An F becomes an F with a, uh, a B flat becomes a B flat with an F and so on. That's just a perfect phrase for doing that. Uh, moving on, um, I do an octave jump just to make it more interesting and because it's um, whenever there's a bit of repetition it's a good idea to do an octave jump. Uh, so that works nicely there. And so on um, and then it's into the solo and three different approaches I suggested um, at the beginning so one approach would be to use the B flat major blues scale and um, that is uh, one octave it's that and you can use what's called the fiddle capo where you put your first finger across the B flat and the F and you keep them there And keep it there for all of that so that helps it helps with the fact that this is a slightly difficult key uh, if you're not an experienced jazz player um, it just makes the whole thing easier and the fact that we've got a lot of chords let's just see how this one uh, scale deals with all those chords it does fairly well uh, it will make you sound uh, cool and confident even as you mash your way through the chords um, especially if you do a proper bluesy approach and do lots of repetition of very simple phrases let me just do it again and this time I will concentrate on being stuffed myth mm -hmm. 
That's quite fun playing like that. Um, another the kind of the diametrically opposed uh, approach is to follow the chords all closely, um, which takes more energy. Um, depends kind of who you're playing to and who you're playing with as to which of these approaches uh, is the best. Um, but let me just try again. This time I will look closely at the chords and I'll try and play notes that are within each of the chords. more brain power doing that um, and uh, I would say a non-jazz audience would find that uh, probably less easy to follow um, whereas the blues approach I think people will appreciate the kind of passion and energy that it's easier to put in there uh, rather than the cool cal calculating uh, bebop approach um, there's one final approach and that is to kind of follow key notes within the melody or within the chords. So let me just play it without the chords and I will just uh, kind of try and point out the key notes. <laughs> kind of the the centers of the melody let's just do that again and I'll try and do a solo which sort of hangs around those notes here we go I'm doing there is I'm 
finding the tonal center of each block of chords or each chord and just improvising simply around the, the note that is in that center. So it's like a simplified approach to following all of the chords properly. Um, so having given you these three ideas, which one is the best? Um, ideally, you do all three, you mix them up and you do them without thinking. And uh, it only takes 20 years to learn to do that. <laughs> um, so I hope you found this approach useful. Uh, if you'd like a copy of The Dots, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email. And if you are enjoying my videos and want to help support what I'm doing and get hold of the nearly 400 PDFs that I now have all in one go, do please join me on Patreon. For as little as £4, uh, you can get all of those. And there's also lots of um, videos not available on the Fiddle channel, which are on there. So thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon.